ageism is real. Ageism is wrong. And ageism can sometimes be very difficult to detect or call out. Ageism is bullshit. So if we know that ageism is a major problem, and it's not something that we as job seekers can necessarily control, what can we as job seekers do on our end to avoid age discrimination in our job search? Watch this video to find out. If you want twice weekly videos with tips, tricks, and advice on how to advance your job search faster, then you're in the right place. Hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell to get notifications when I drop my next video on Tuesday and go live on Thursdays. My videos will equip you with some of the most valuable tools to get interviews faster and make your job search easier because job searching shouldn't be this hard. I'm Kamara Toffolo, resume writer, LinkedIn consultant, and job search strategist who helps established professionals dare to do work differently and land great fitting gigs. Ageism is reflective of bias. And it's very difficult for us to do anything about other people's biases. But what we can do is be protective of some of our own information that might help fuel that bias. While age discrimination can occur to anyone at any age, and the advice I'm going to give you can be applied to many ages, my focus is going to be on older job seekers for two reasons. I largely work with senior executives who are more advanced in their careers and therefore they tend to be older. And the second thing is that statistics show that older workers are more negatively and more frequently impacted by ageism than younger workers. So let's get into a couple ways that we can use our resume and LinkedIn profile to beat ageism and get hired. Hey, Cream. Hey, it's how Cream you guys have to. Uh, I don't know. You're the man, buddy. I run a small fake ID company for my car with a laminated machine that I swipe from the sheriff's station. First, let's take a look at deleting graduation dates. When I'm working with clients of all ages, one of the first things that I do when building a resume or, or a LinkedIn profile is to delete graduation dates. The reason we do this is because including graduation dates on our resume or our LinkedIn is one of the most obvious tells for our age. As an example, if we include our bachelor's degree, and it's graduation date. Most people will assume that we graduated around 22, 23 years of age. So all someone has to do is look at the graduation date and do the math to sort of figure out an estimate of how old we might be. We don't wanna give anyone the opportunity to do this malicious math. So let's take a look at Creed's resume and how his education would actually appear without dates. So here we've got Creed's resume and his education section on his resume. And we've filled out the degree that Creed might have, but who knows with him because he led a very mysterious life. If we were to include dates of graduation for Creed, they would go right on the right hand side against the right hand margin. But in this case, we're just going to leave the dates completely blank. Now let's take a look at how this will appear on LinkedIn. I've made a video specifically about addressing the education section on your LinkedIn profile, and I've linked that in the description of this video below. One of the little known things about LinkedIn is that you can actually enter your education without including the actual graduation dates. So let me show you how. Here we've got Creed's LinkedIn profile, well, actually my LinkedIn profile, and I'm about to enter Creed's supposed bachelor's degree. When I get to the point where I'm asked to include a graduation or attendance dates, I just leave them blank like this. It's that easy. Now let's talk about old work experience. Creed? Yes, sir. Everything okay? Everything's cool, dude. I'm 30. Well, in November, I'll be 30. One of the major pitfalls that I see with resume writing is job seekers eliminating older jobs from their resume simply because they think they're old. You may have heard some resume advice online about only including 10 years of work experience or 15 years of work experience and cutting anything that doesn't fall within that time frame. I don't agree with this advice. The reason I don't agree with this is when we get into chopping jobs simply because they seem old, we can run the risk of eliminating relevant work experience as well as losing a large portion of our career story. 
For example, it doesn't make sense that if you've been in management for 15 or more years, that the first job that you show on your resume is a manager job because it's highly unlikely that right after you graduated from university, you walked into a management job. So let's take a look at a couple different ways where we can address earlier work experience while still keeping your age discreet. So one of the ways to honor your early work experience and early career story is to opt for an early career highlight section on your resume. This section will follow immediately after your main professional experience section. Let's take a look at Creed's resume and how that might look. So here we are appending Creed's early career highlights section to his professional experience section. As you can see, this is the last section before we get into his education. What we wanna do with an early career highlight section is highlight the best accomplishments from the earlier part of Creed's career. And we won't be revealing any actual dates here for any of his particular early jobs or roles that were at the beginning of his career. What we really want to do with this early career highlight section is to make sure that anything we showcase here is really showing early career progression and a foundation that's relevant and will resonate with Creed's current target job and employer. Let's talk about another option. Let's say Creed is in a situation where he has some early work experience that is super relevant to the direction in which he's headed now and really shows his qualifications for his target role in a very specific way. We can actually take a highlight from his early career and transplant it into a career highlight section early on our first page of our resume. This helps us bring forward super relevant yet old work experience and accomplishments. And this is how it would look on Creed's resume. I like to place the section right under the professional profile paragraph so that it is front and center and allows the reader to get the really important information fast. The great thing about using these highlights sections, whether the early career highlights section or the career highlights section, is we don't need to include any dates. I remember I blogged the whole thing www.creedthoughts.gov.www backslash creedthoughts. Check it out. Okay, if you've been watching my videos lately, I've been going on and on and on and on about tech proficiency. With the pandemic, as you know, being tech proficient could not be more important because tech is what enables us to keep doing our work. But tech proficiency, or lack thereof, is one of the awful assumptions that ageist people make about people simply based on their age. Ageist people assume that older workers aren't tech proficient and that younger workers are. Age and tech proficiency really have no proven relationship. That said, for all of us, it's important for us to showcase our proficiency in the tech that we would be using in our target role. We'll want to make sure that we're including the desirable tech skills in our skills section on both our resume and our LinkedIn. We can really uncover these desirable tech skills by taking a look at target job postings. In addition to naming the tech skills themselves, we're also going to want to pepper into our resume accomplishments that demonstrate this proficiency in tech. These accomplishments might be something like how you improved a process, let's say, with that tech, how you may have saved time or money with that tech, or how you may be proactively solved a problem or saved a headache with that tech. The options for demonstrating this proficiency in tech are limitless. But what we're really aiming for is to show that we know the tech, we know how to use the tech, and we know how to get results with the tech. Bo body, Bo body. What does the first B stand for? What are we doing? We're making acronyms. Okay, what does the first B stand for? Um, business. I like it. Business. Good, Kevin. All right. While much of this video is about keeping age discreet, what I don't want you to do is keep your unique career story under lock and key. Of course, share relevant stories in your resume, but sharing career stories is also where LinkedIn comes in. Make sure that your LinkedIn profile is full and complete. This includes a well-written headline that names your target job as well as calls out the main solution that you create a summary or about section that speaks to the evolution of your career, 
where you've been, where you're headed, and what you can bring to your next opportunity. And that your work experience or professional experience section includes all of your roles and uses the description section of each role to talk about the aspects of the work that you loved or the aspects of the work that you're really proud of. While on your resume, I recommended using an early career highlight section or a career highlight section to include earlier accomplishments without dates. LinkedIn doesn't offer the same feature. So I do recommend cutting earlier jobs on LinkedIn as needed. And then in the first job that you do list, include a story about how you got there. This can include details of some earlier work. You can also include career highlights in your summary or about section. And here's my cue for you. Are you worried about your age in your job search? Which of the tools that I've mentioned in this video are you going to apply? Tell me in the comments below. I make a lot of videos, but I also make free guides to help you in your job search. If you'd like my free cover letter guide, make sure to grab it. Look for the sign up link in the description below. And if you found this video helpful, give it a like, share it with a friend, and click on my face over there and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.